Okay, I guess this is part two. Uh, I guess there was some uh, need to be clarified on what we're really what I'm really trying to do here. Yeah, I'm just uh, talk a little bit more about your setup. Uh, it is kind of unique, and uh, and you're you're putting out a really good uh, uh, compost. Okay. Um, this is what I'm trying to do: just uh, get the earthworms to get even more uh, active and everything. It's my uh, opinion, not a scientist obviously, but it's my opinion that the earthworms actually, uh, because they're so small and what they're straight through intestine, is they are not really uh, eating the decomposing matter itself and gaining their nutrition from that. It's that the, er the uh, soil bacteria are kind of their probiotic. They break it down for them and then they, they eat the, uh, they digest the bacteria themselves. So. Uh, um, are these, these are red wiggler worms, right? Yeah, the, uh, Fioted, uh, uh, Fetida. Yeah, there you go. Um, how long have you had these, this, uh, your, your colony of worms running? I guess this will be the, I'm going to my second year doing this. And you haven't, you haven't had to refresh them by adding more worms or anything? I've made a few mistakes, but, uh, I've learned, uh, from it and, I think I refined a system here based on the uh, earthworm bin system. I, this is what I started with. I didn't do the uh, tote with the holes punched in it and throw your stuff in there with a shred of newspaper or whatever. This is, I thought, was a better way to do it. And then I spent the money on it. Where'd you get your worms from to start out? Uncle Jim's Worm Farm! <laughs> right on. Um, so cool. And uh, so what are they, what, what kind of substrate are they in? Yeah. Uh, they're in the, uh, I, I think I've used it the last of my, uh, you can see a little bit here left of the uh, coconut core. That's what I was tearing apart here, but uh, mostly it's the uh, spent mushroom blocks. Right on, so uh, I, do, I do produce mushrooms on the top floor of this building, so uh, we've been uh, utilize, utilizing the spent blocks when they're, once they're done producing mushrooms or any blocks that we have that are contaminated or anything like that. And uh, what's the first thing that you do with the block? Uh, I put it in here. I've got four big uh, uh, air stones. I don't know how many the size out right now, but uh, I think it's a big one out. Yeah, I've got four of these going with a uh, To aerate the water and agitate the material. They do need some maintenance and this is a good indicator that you're uh, how heavy, heavily you're feeding the system by how quickly a biofilm filled, builds up inside the block and plugs it up. But, uh, over the winter I'll plug in these uh, heat seedling uh, heat, heat mats help keep it warm but now that it's summertime I've got them unplugged. So what does this start with? Just water or? Dechlorinated water and uh, I probably should use earthworm casts and make my own tea but uh, I cheat and I use a, uh, a prepared product. This is uh, doesn't have a label on it because he uh, kind of ran out of money for labels but the local hydroponic shop Harrisburg Hydroponics uh, makes their own recycler. It's a uh, uh, very wide profile of bacteria and funguses that will uh, break down whatever you might have in your soil. Nice. And whatever you feed them is what will grow out of that uh, spectrum of bacteria. And uh, put a little humic acid in there, some B vitamins, uh, Cali mag. I stopped using this because this has actually had some molasses in it and that causes an extra bloom. Some, uh, An extra bloom? What do you mean by that? Uh, it causes the bacteria population to spike too much, and then that'll plug up my. Uh, this is the bin. I throw my uh, plugged up uh, aerator stones in. I'll throw them in this, and then once this is full, I'll go down and clean them. But uh, like I said, bacteria will build up in here. You got a thick biofilm that doesn't want to come off, and you have to. That's a good indicator that uh, I'm overfeeding this. Go uh, light on the. Uh, uh, molasses. I was going without for a while, but 
I think I actually do need some, but very, very little. I mean, this whole, I think this is 11 gallon capacity. Maybe I'll put a teaspoon in every other week. And yeah. I have to learn to uh, space it out. When I put the uh, mushroom blocks in there, there is a uh, bloom from all the uh, metabolites from the uh, fungus. They are breaking down uh, the uh, structural carbohydrate of the sawdust into uh, uh, less complex carbohydrates and, I don't know, the simple sugars. Then there's the uh, hyphae and mycelia of the uh, mushroom themselves. Uh, so that's a food source for the bacteria and to put uh, a very simple carbohydrate like molasses is. I mean, you can see where it's bubbled over and dribbled across the floor. <laughs> the, it's, I mean, the film strength that the bubbles have will just lift the lid off and it'll just foam all over the floor. Right on. So the mushroom blocks and having that, that decomposed carbohydrate has been allowing you to use less molasses? Yeah, less molasses. And I use the calcium because I figure uh, uh, we're feeding earthworms here and they have a calciferous gland to help uh, moderate the pH in their uh, intestines. So adding a little bit more is... I don't have a laboratory. I don't know what they really need, but just peace of mind in my head. And besides, if you study calcium at all, it's a, it's a miracle nutrient. And there's a, there's a list, the, the list of what it doesn't do is shorter than the list of what it does do. So, <laughs> seriously. Right on. Um, I believe it. Yeah, and I do use the Roots Organics uh, uh, Trinity. This stuff is magic. It's expensive, but a little goes a long way and it's well worth it in my mind. So. And what exactly does, is that? Uh, do you know? Uh, I don't have my glasses on, but uh, derived from molasses, kelp extract, yucca extract, soy protein, hydroly hydrolysate, and aloe extract. I think the yucca and aloe are more surfactants. If you want to use this as a, uh, dilute this down and use it as a uh, foliar feeding, you can. Nice. Right on. So, um, yeah, let's check out some of these trays. Okay, this is one I filled yesterday. Ooh, worms Saturday. are just moving around on it. Yeah, and they've, uh, this is how successful, uh, yeah, they are colonizing it already. That I just filled it yesterday. Nice. And that's why I bubble it, prepare it, because uh, like I said, you get a good earthworm, or a uh, microbial, uh, whether it's yeast, funguses, uh, bacteria, it kind of doesn't matter. I think they just eat it all. Right on. And are you still putting your kitchen scraps and stuff in here? I saw some avocados in there. Yeah, yeah, I put that on the bottom, then I cap it off. I sprinkle a little bit of uh, very fine uh, powdered limestone. Do not use quick lime, do not use burnt lime. Limestone, ground limestone. Uh, in my mind, this is a, a grit for them, like a chicken, need, or a, a chicken or a bird needs a gravel for its crop, because they don't have teeth to grind down the... Uh, uh, what they ingest, and it's also another source of calcium. Right on. It'll be slow really. They don't, we're gonna reshoot some of this today. Uh, da -da -da, a lot of people are using the uh, totes. They just uh, cut some holes into them for air hole circulation, and use uh, bedding to absorb the uh, moisture, but I'm kind of taking the opposite approach because that's how these are set up. We have the uh, tap on the front. And I like to use that as a tea a liquid. So, uh, okay, I filled this one uh, last week. Apples and whatnot, and I use uh, spent uh, mushroom blocks for the bedding. And I did something I thought I'd. Uh, Put a quart of the uh, water through here to get a more tea out of uh, this, but unfortunately it's uh, leaking out the back, so I kind of need to go through this. But, uh, you can see uh, what it looks like after a bit. This one's dated uh, May 22nd, and here it is June uh, 20, what, 6th today? Yep. That's just stuff is black. <laughs> well, this is also coconut core too, as my bedding. Right on. It's a mixture of coconut core and some uh, mushroom block. Yeah. This is uh, some avocado. For some reason, avocados tend to dry out. But other than that, it looks like it's pretty much 
Oh, there's an apple. Mostly done. It'll take a tray once it's loaded about uh, two months on average to finish up. But uh, I like to leave them a little longer so I can get a little more tea out of them. Hang on. Whoa! Holy shit. <laughs> and this is the bottom. The way these are designed is uh, sitting in my light. They, want, they uh, have this design to leave this empty and just collect liquid. But uh, this gets anaerobic. That's the one uh, criticism of these uh, plastic towers because the plastic obviously doesn't like, let uh, a lot of air in and you will find a few around the uh, edges where they join. But uh, I filled this up with bedding and I've added uh, air stones. And you can see the uh, worms respond to this quite well. Nice. And it keeps them from uh, stinking. And interestingly enough, um, if I, before I started doing this, uh, as you lift each tray off from the uh, one uh, below it, uh, it would stink. But now that I've just done this, that really doesn't occur all that often. You'll still get some anaerobic zones, especially the uh, tray underneath the fresh one. Uh, if there's a lot of runoff from it, you'll get a, uh, a core of a uh, anaerobic zone. You'll see some grow some weird funguses in there. <laughs> yeah, I put this. Uh, this is the. Uh, a coat hanger cut off and I use it to uh, lift the uh, back of the uh, bottom tray off so I don't crimp my uh, airstone uh, airline so much and unfortunately the uh, worms love that because that's more a uh, place where they can get some fresh air and they uh, congregate back there and that's what causes the uh, leak they bridge it up with their uh, castings and that forms a wick and the liquid will go that way instead of this way. Uh -huh. Right on. Anything else you wanted to add? Oh, yeah. Right here. See what I mean? So that's that fungus and bacteria. Yeah. yeah, because this is dripping so much moisture, it just excludes all the uh, air. Mm -hmm. And then you get those weird funguses growing in there. And the, do the worms, what do, how do they, how do the worms do in those zones? Uh, it clears up after a bit, after these uh, are done uh, draining off. Because as the, uh, these uh, rot, the cells of the uh, plant material uh, release their water. Mm -hmm. As the cell walls decompose and the water runs off. And uh, of course that has a peak and then it ebbs off. And as the water drains away, it allows the uh, air to return. So the uh, that just gives more food for the uh, earthworms. Yeah, all that bacteria and fungus. Yep. yep. Nice. And now you can see it's dripping now. Right on. Instead of wicking up the back. Nice. There we go. Okay, because it's gardening season, I'm down to my last bit of uh, finished uh, earthworm casts. And uh, this is what I do to keep the culture going. This is uh, coconut core based uh, castings. And uh, as I sift from a finished tray, uh, I'll sift it into this and any material that uh, doesn't go through the uh, sieve will go back into uh, the, ne the next tray being made. So that way I'm inoculating the material with uh, not only earthworms, but also with uh, material that uh, wouldn't decompose, and that has the uh, bacteria and whatnot. That bin is like a black hole. If oh. I like, every time I focus the camera in there, okay. it absorbs all the light. But yeah, I just wanted to show everybody that the worms that are in there. So, um, so you keep your population, you keep a population in your bins. Yeah, I try and uh, that way the bacteria and everything is fresh. It doesn't go stale, doesn't have to die off, and the worms are still finishing off uh, uh, eating anything that uh, 
once it's done decomposing, it's filtered through the uh, mesh. Here, this is the sieve I use. So the earthworms will fall through this and all the finished material and anything that doesn't finish just goes back to uh, you know form the next tray. Mm -hmm. So I'm constantly uh, keeping like a uh, uh, like Herman bread or sourdough bread, uh, sour mash whiskey. You're using some of the uh, mash from the last batch to make the next mat, uh, batch. Right on. So something of a stable population and whatnot. But uh, once a month I'll feed these guys. I guess I'll do it now. Pretty close in the month anyway. These are coffee filters. Nice. But uh, here's your basic carbohydrate. Some uh, powdered uh, grain. These are all just dustings. Just dustings. They're very tiny animals. They don't eat a whole lot. And this is something. It's a uh, biodynamic preparation. There's a the seal. It's a little expensive, like 32 bucks for this. But it has uh, fish meal, kelp meal, colloidal phosphate, molasses, earthworm castings, and green sand in it. And I discovered they absolutely love this. Oh, a little <laughs> too much air. Can the camera see that now? Oh yeah, a little bit better. Okay, see these two spots? Mm-hmm. Uh, earthworms will, that'll be about a three inches deep of uh, earthworms now. Nice. So they absolutely love that stuff. And this is something I'm giving a try. This is actually, uh, what, earthworm casts? It's another, uh, blah, blah, blah. I can't remember. Yeah, Commodore compost. Nice. So, I don't know how much waste of money that is, but we'll give it a try and see how they like it. <laughs> and here's something that uh, guys make co uh, compost tea. I was researching uh, the whole Heisenberg formula uh, on a lot of the uh, internet forums, and uh, some people were talking about adding uh, guano to their teas. Uh, it's not a good idea because for the amount of time you're brewing the tea, you're just waking up and breeding the population. You're not, that's not enough time for the guano itself to actually break down. Um, if you're putting it into a uh, hydroponic solution or system, uh, it's questionable whether the plants are actually going to utilize it. Um, what you need to do is either put it in the bins, let the earthworms uh, decompose it here, or again to uh, feed the earthworms and they'll uh, break it down and you can fortify your earthworm castings by putting your guano in your earthworm bins. Nice. So when you do uh, put your uh, earthworm castings into a uh, bag, into your uh, tea brewer, you're getting the benefit of those nutrients. Nice. In a soluble form. Right on. And then I cover the uh, surface back up again. So it means it remains nice and uh, moist form, and it helps to soothe the light. Awesome.